So you notice there were three switches and there's only one of us. So we need to take one of these statues across, assuming that this little pink dude will let me go by. And I think if I just scoot along the side, he doesn't bother me too much. But let's see if I can nail him with this bomb anyway, because I don't like him too much. No, I guess not. Whatever. Stay away from me, Beemos! Pretty sure those are the incarnations of the Beemos in this game. Familiar Zelda enemies. But step on the third switch. And that activates all of these moving platforms! And we're going to see a lot of moving platforms here. I guess the gods like moving platforms that move magically because they're magical gods and they like doing cool things and showing us that they are gods and reminding us why they were the ones that are so cool and so awesome and we love them so much because we don't want them to kill us because they're so much more powerful than us that they can't defeat Ganon themselves, those lazy bums. So this is the central hub of the dungeon in here and there are three different paths we can take, two of which are locked off, one of which is glowing. Always take the glowing path, because it's so inviting and glowy. Stay away from me. Let's jump across another moving platform. They really use a lot of the moving platforms in this dungeon. And all the glowy, flashy stuff. I mean, overall, this dungeon is visually pleasing in just about every way. Seeker of the Goddess's Guidepost. Press R to calm me and guide me to my place of truth. Place of truth? So we press R to activate our magical cell phone, which is our voice! We get to control Link's voice! And this statue follows us, just like a good little statue guy. And the reason they have this barrier above our heads is so we can't just carry him across, we have to lead him across and not go too far along. Now, I believe the characters written on the sides of the ceiling are... Maybe they're in Hylian? It doesn't really look like Hylian to me. Maybe the patterns on the floor are... All, no, I think the patterns are just um, random. Or maybe they are written in Hylian. I, I'm not sure. If anybody can correct me on that, please, let me know. Or even better, let me know what it says. Because most of the stuff in here that's writ looks like it's written in a weird language is Hylian, and there is a quick way to translate from Hylian to English or Hylian to Spanish. I forget what it is. Not Spanish! Hylian to Spanish. <laughs> Japanese. But there is a way to read most of the stuff in here. I just don't think most of the stuff in the Tower of the Gods makes any direct translational sense. Hey, it's a tablet! That that looks strangely like the tablet on Dragon Roost that we got our Song of Wind from. So, let's see. There appear to be markings that indicate specific directions. And... More Hylian like I was talking about. Yes, that's what it says. And our first 4-4 four, four time melody. So we have to hold the joystick to the left. Do, 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 do. You learn the command melody. And I like a text that says the exact same thing I just sang. And another door opens. And the statue talks! My kin wait beyond these doors. Control them and guide them to their places of truth to open the path to the gods. I thought I was already on the path to the gods. But now serving no more purpose, the tablet disappears. Just like everything else should when it no longer serves a purpose. I'm sorry, that was heartless. But in video games, that's usually what happens. Also in movies, because people tend not to stick around for very long if they don't serve a purpose. So let's lure this bubble down here so we can get rid of him. And roll away the flames. Now here we're going to have to do a little bit of swinging. So, if we're angled properly, I should be able to get this in one go. And I did! Hooray! So this dungeon is going by strangely flawlessly. 
But as you can see, there's another statue on the other side of this pit that we can call down just like before, except we can't bring him back with us because we needed to swing over here with our grappling hook. So what are we going to do? Well, this took me a little while to figure out when I first tried this, but Link needs to stand on this button over here, use the command melody to take control of the statue. That's what you do with the command melody. It's pretty creepy. And the statue starts glowing green to show that you're the one that's controlling it, and you walk him across the bridge that Link made, because Link can get back here all on his own because he's a big boy and he has the grappling hook. But the statue does not. So we press R to cancel, just like we did with the seagull. And we swing back across to meet our statue buddy! So, again, we have to find some way to get him across this gap over here, but we don't have any magical bridge switches. We do have this one, however, that opens up that door, and I'm not quite sure what's in that door, because we haven't been there yet! I don't care, Coral! Can I just ignore him and use the grappling hook anyway? Yes, I can! You want to see what he has to say anyway, though? No, I guess not. I believe all he says is that don't worry about leaving the statue behind. He'll still be there. You just go on and do your thing. I'm sure I'll put up the text for anybody who's interested in it at all, but that's all he says, really. So swing over to the room that we just opened. And... Let's stock up on rupees and such before we go in. I'm surprised they don't give us a heart, because we're going to get one of those magical fades to black. Which can only mean... Mid-boss time! And it's our old friend. The Dark Knot! Scary son of a gun, isn't he? The first time you fight him, he is. I was controlling as if I was playing Twilight Princess. I tried doing the... What was it? The side... Damn it! I'm not going to remember what the move is before I finish this fight, am I? It's called the, uh, what's it called? The move with the back slice! There we go! I tried doing the back slice, then the command actually worked. I think I'm going to try that next time and see if that works again. Because that was pretty epic! But if no one's played Twilight Princess, you get a couple of hidden skills, and the back slice is one of them. It allows you to roll around the side of an enemy and hit them from behind, which is essentially what we did with the parry attack there. But anyway, we get arguably the greatest weapon in the game, the bow and arrow, or the hero's bow. Hold the button to knock an arrow and release the button to shoot. You can only carry up to 30 arrows, which kind of sucks, but we don't need more than 30 for now anyway. And something cool you could do with this, just like the Dark Nut could, is you can swipe at those pillars and knock them down with his sword. Like I said before, one of the my favorite aspects of this game is that you can pick up enemies, weapons, and actually use them for your own benefit! So make good use of those. Anyway, eye switches! I know what to do with those! I'd also like to show off my kick-ass marksmanship skills by not missing these bubbles. By not missing these bubbles. I might be too used to the arrow controls for other games. But there you go. So those are the platforms we're going to be using to help our little buddy get across the abyss over here. However, we have to get back to our little buddy to do that. Although I might be able to drop onto one of these platforms. No, I suppose not. Well, let's see if we can swing to it anyway. There we go. And tell you what, I'll go into this room just in case if I fall off, I'll spawn right back here, rather than all the way on the other side. So let's wait for those platforms to make their way back out here, because for some reason they went all the way back in when we went to the other room. Very nice of you, platforms. And it looks like they glow in unison with the statue. I mean, once again, everything in here seems to be glowing at the same time, which shows you that there really is some sort of greater power watching over all of this, everything that you're doing. 
that's pretty warm in this room. Hey, that one has horns. I didn't notice that before. Did the other one have horns? Are all three of the statues unique? So let's see, we put that one in his place. Let's check out what the other one looks like. Yeah, so that one didn't have horns. That one kind of had curly ears. That one has horns. And that one has, like, the outward horns. So with bow and arrow in hand, we'll move on to our final puzzle! Which I'm going to use bombs for. Because there's stuff we can do down here, too, that we need bombs for. And if you time your throw correctly, you can blow up the wall and not worry about the stupid keys. Take that, keys. Now this is pretty neat. You don't want to forget about this. It may not appear the right thing to do when you first get here. Designs that reflect wind are drawn here. Whenever you see one of these, and they're not going to come up until much later, like, look, whenever I get close to that, the Triforce symbol on the ground turns like a bright yellowish, doesn't it? It did before. Yeah, see, why is it, like, randomly changing color? You see the Triforce symbol? Dark light, dark light, dark light, whatever. So whenever you see one of these symbols on the ground, play the Wind's Requiem. I believe they only appear... Hmm. Eight more times in the game, maybe? Play the Wind's Requiem. A cool treasure chest appears on one of these. And usually giant statues don't attack you from all sides. It's usually a treasure chart, or something very similar to a treasure chart, essentially the same thing. So we have one treasure chart, and that reminds me, we still have to go back and get the other treasure chart. But these guys, not much of an issue either. Just throw bombs in their mouths, and not get crushed by them. So let them run around and do their thing, and you can go die. And I'll go get my monies, and my hearts, and my bombs. I want monies! Can never have too much money. Because you never know when one rupee might actually matter. Now, I could go back and... I, is there anything of importance over here? I don't believe there is. What is in that room? Hmm. I honestly forget. I know... One thing in here is completely worthless. But I don't know about both things. Oh, you stupid bubble! I know one thing in here is completely pointless, but I don't know about the other. Can I hit that thing from over here? Get out of my way! There we go. Okay, that makes things easier. I guess I'll wait for it to come back down. See if I can flute do it. There we go. I mean, you could platform your way through this if you really want to, but I don't. Stay away from me, Bubble! What is with these bubbles blocking all the cutscenes? Hey, look, a small key. I actually did need it. Stay away from me! Go die! I think at best up there is a joy pendant. I don't want to worry about it. So instead, I'm going to at least float over to this platform, because I know I can make the jump or die. That's all so fast. Because it takes me right next to the door. I don't know why I didn't think to do that in the first place. But I believe the other treasure is just a joy pendant because I remember where the second treasure chart is. Stay away from me, keys. But we've got everything we wanted down there in the water. The only thing we have left to do in this room is to go all the way across to the other side because there's something in the other part. Now, if you recall, when we stood on one of these balances, the balance went down with us. We have to balance out our weight by placing the statues on the other side so we can walk across. 